we want to find the limit of the sequence given by a sub n. We determine the limit of a sequence the same way we determine the limit at infinity of a function, which means the limit of the sequence is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of 2n to the second times e raised to the power of negative 2n. However, when determining a limit at infinity, it's often helpful to have the function in fraction form. So right now we have a denominator of one, but if we move e raised to the power of negative 2n down to the denominator, this will change the sign of the exponent, which means this limit is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of 2n squared divided by e raised to the power of positive 2n. Now that we have the function in fraction form, let's see what's happening to the value of the numerator and denominator as n approaches infinity. But looking at just the numerator, as n approaches infinity, two times n squared is going to get larger and larger and approach infinity. And now looking at the denominator, as n approaches infinity, e raised to the power of 2n is also going to get larger and larger and increase without bound and approach positive infinity. So because this limit is in the form of infinity over infinity, this is called an indeterminate form and therefore we can apply L'Hopital's rule to help us determine the limit. So looking at our notes below for review, L'Hopital's rule states that if the limit is in one of these indeterminate forms, the limit as x approaches c of the quotient of the two functions is equal to the limit as x approaches c of the quotient of the derivatives of the two functions, which means this limit is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of in the numerator, we'd have the derivative of 2n squared with respect to n, which would be 4n. In the denominator, we'd have the derivative of e raised to the power of 2n, which does require the chain rule. The derivative is e raised to the power of 2n times the derivative of 2n, which is 2. So the derivative is equal to e raised to the power of 2n times 2, or 2 e raised to the power of 2n. Remember the derivative formula, the derivative with respect to x of e to the u is equal to e to the u times u prime. So because the exponent is 2n, we do have to apply the chain rule where u prime is 2. And now let's see what's happening to the value of the numerator denominator as n approaches infinity. Well, as n approaches infinity, 4n is still approaching infinity, and so is e raised to the power of 2n. So this is still in the indeterminate form of infinity over infinity, and therefore we can apply L'Hopital's rule again. So this is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of, in the numerator we have the derivative of 4n, which would be 4. In the denominator we have the derivative of 2 e to the 2n with respect to n. Again, this requires the chain rule. It would be 2 times e to the 2n times 2, or 4 e to the 2n. In this form, notice how the numerator is just the constant 4, so it's no longer affected by n, but the denominator is still going to get larger and larger and approach positive infinity. So looking at this fraction as a whole, because the numerator stays 4 and the denominator increases without bound, or gets larger and larger, the fraction gets smaller and smaller and approaches 0. So because the limit of the sequence is equal to 0, we can say that a sub n converges to 0, which means as we generate more and more terms of the sequence using the formula, the value of the terms will approach zero. And let's verify this by looking at the graph of the sequence. So here's the graph of the sequence a sub n, where n is along the horizontal axis, and a sub n, the value of the term, is along the vertical axis. We can very easily see as we generate more and more terms, the value of the terms approach zero, verifying a sub n converges to zero. I hope you found this helpful.